Hey everybody, welcome to the Iron Trap uh, podcast. Uh, for a reminder of anybody that's just watching this for the first time, <laughs> thank you, Moon. Um, we, uh, we broadcast this on our YouTube channel where you can watch the video form of this where we do the interview and Mike drops in usually some interesting photos and clips and things like that. Um, or you can watch it on all of your normal um, podcast spots. Mike's in the background, so he might shout some things if I say things wrong. Um, but yeah, Spotify and all those. all those places. You can listen to the podcast or you can watch it on YouTube, like I said. So this is probably the most requested <laughs> podcast ever. We've only done a few, but it's the most requested. And it's Steve. <laughs> Hey, insert the clapping. Um, everybody has been asking a lot of questions about you, um, <laughs> and we figured we had to do something because it's uh, it's getting kind of ridiculous now. So yeah, it is. The man of mystery. I, we need... I put it off as long as I possibly could. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm busy that Friday. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, he's been busy a lot all of a sudden. Um, but yeah, so uh, we are... Yeah, this one is totally different than most of them because when we started the podcast, we're like, oh, we're going to go to collections and do different stuff like that and people that are obsessed with collecting and different things. But you guys have been requested that the podcast has kind of gone all over the place, like <laughs> everything we do. So yeah. we've now started doing all kinds of stuff. So um, it's Steve. So, Steve, I don't. a lot of this stuff I don't even – I'm not even going to know because – I, I, I don't talk about myself much. Yes. Very, very little. Yeah. So, Steve, um, in fact, we've never done a proper interview. Steve just kind of got hired. I just kind of showed up one day and didn't leave. <laughs> <laughs> that's about, that's a good. Uh, it's like a junkyard dog. He kind yeah. of, yeah. You're like, oh, he looks hungry. Let's let him in. And yeah. He won't leave. Um, yeah. So, um, Steve, I mean, how did you. I guess first thing is, how you've been in the car since forever. Let's start in the beginning. Yep. I mean, as a little kid, what's your background on? Yeah, I mean, as a little kid, I had, you know, 100 Matchbox cars. I had Legos that I made into cars. It's just always been an obsession of mine. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, as you got, you know, beyond a kid, like, what you know, you started actually getting into real cars. Was there family members that kind of got you you know, into the actual, you know, muscle car, hot rod, whatever? Not really. I mean, my father liked cars, but he didn't work on them at all or anything. He, you know, always kept his cars very nice and everything. I remember he brought me home a car magazine when I was a little kid. If he brought it home from work, I don't even remember what the car magazine. It was a New York one. All the cars are from New York. And just, I, I can still remember that. It was just, it's still clear in my head that I can still even remember the, like there was a Vega with a small block in it with no hood on. And I thought it was the coolest thing I ever saw. I was totally hooked from that moment on. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. So what was your like first car? Well, what was your first car? My first car was a 66 Chevelle. Well, that's pretty cool, actually. It was it, it was not a nice one, but it, it was a 66 Chevelle. But it was I, better than saying you had a Pinto. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it started with something cool. Yeah. Now, what... Did you modify that one, or is it just a get-around beater? A uh, little bit of both. I mean, I tried. I didn't, you know, I was 16 years old. I didn't know squat, and I I, I learned how to do things the wrong way a lot. Yeah. You know, I, I made a lot of mistakes, but, yeah, I, I always tried to be where I was always under the hood. Even if I didn't know what I was doing, I was playing with something. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, did that one, what was the demise of that car? A tree. <laughs> you like how I said demise because I know everybody's like first or first few or maybe first yeah. five cars or die that, that way. That was the only one for me. That oh, was right. after, after that I, I learned my lesson. <laughs> I was I wasn't near as good a driver as I thought I was. <laughs> you ran out of talent. As I did. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what was your? I mean, was there? What was your first like? You know, car that you hot rod if you will or, or a car that you really started you know tinkering with um i had a uh, v8 monza with a oh. four speed when okay. i was in high school that i did a lot of work to and that's pretty that's i mean that's pretty light car v8 yeah. engine you know it was yeah 
but again, being a kid, I didn't know anything. I just, I, I put an engine in it and, you know, never did anything with the trans or the rear end or the traction or anything else, you know, yeah. it was just, it was all a learning curve at that point yet. And I didn't, like I said, I didn't really have anyone guiding me. I just, I was reading Hot Rod Magazine and trying to figure out what to do. Right. And you were in the, so you were in the Hot Rod Magazine era of like the 70s, 80s kind of right at the beginning of the 80s I, I got my first subscription when the 81 or 82 Camaro came out like that oh. was that was the cover car of the hot I lost again I'll remember that till the day I die really? that was the first you know, my I think my parents got me it for for Christmas or something hot rod, <laughs> a subscription a sub, yeah I feel like a lot of kids that was like the the go-to thing get your kid a subscription to hot rod yeah that's cool so you grew up in a very much different time of hot rodding I guess yeah. it was more of I mean, it was the pro? I don't even say pro touring, like the street no, freaks it, kind of thing. It, it, it there was it was a street freak era, but yeah. I mean, I didn't know anybody who had one of them. Those were always you know ex nice, expensive yeah. cars. They were you know way above my level. It was you know the, my friends and you know people from school. They just you said they had an old Chevelle or an old Duster or something, and they right. did the best they could with it. Right. Right. Now, when um, were you, like, first job? What was your first job? My first, my first, first job was working at a kitchen at a, working in a kitchen at a Chi Chi's restaurant. Chi Chi's, oh my God. Remember that place? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> I, I, I lasted a couple of months. I toughed it out and that was all I could do. I just okay. couldn't do that anymore. Chi Chi's, that's funny. Yeah. Now, when did you get into, like, trying to pursue mechanical or, or or any of that kind of stuff. when i was in high school i, I had i was in auto shop of course mm -hmm. and uh a guy that my auto shop teacher knew one of his former students that he was still friendly with had a garage oh okay and uh he got me a job there when i was in high school so i learned a lot there so that was kind of just you went in as the the gopher or the you know oil change guy or yeah something. exactly yeah you know yeah it was learn, learn take this there. apart, take that apart, you know, change okay. the oil, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And then you eventually, I mean, I only know a small part, so eventually you went on to work at a dealership. What, yeah, I, I, uh, after I got out of high school, I tried the college thing. It was uh, General Motors had a program at the time where you took college classes and then got automotive training also. Mm -hmm. and then you worked at a dealership at the same time. And I did that for a while and... I wasn't very good at it. The <laughs> college thing just didn't do it for me. Uh, yeah, I can't. yeah. I was I was done with school at high school. I don't know why I went on, but yeah. And uh, like I said, I was I guess I was still trying to learn a lot mm -hmm. at that at that point, and my head probably wasn't in the right place. I was eighteen, nineteen yeah. years old. My I wasn't thinking about career or right. Exactly. You know. Yeah, I had a lot of other things on my mind at the time. <laughs> But how, so you worked at it. You did end up working at GM. Yeah, I worked at a Chevrolet dealership for probably three years. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then I worked at an Oldsmobile dealership at ship after that for maybe two years. Man, that that had to be during the the sad times of GM and oh yeah and Oldsmobile, like the most boring cars on the planet, mm -hmm. in my so, opinion. Sorry to anybody that has some of those. Like right. Mid eighties, right? right? It would have been late eighties. Oh god. Yeah, late eighties. Yeah, oh my god. Those were really plastic. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Everything. Luminas. Yeah. Was oh that, yeah. That that period. Oh, yep. God. Oh, Berettas. Mm hmm. Oh man, that is the worst, most dismal. How could anybody be in anything then? That was like they. Took... I, it was it was hard, and I didn't realize there was other paths. I thought since I like cars, I had to be a mechanic. Right. I love cars. I hate being a mechanic. Yep. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't want to be doing warranty work on a new car. That, yep. that I just, I could not get into it. Yeah. So you, you toughed it out again for a yeah, few I years. Yeah, I toughed it out for a while. And and then during that time, were you kind of more hot rodding of personal cars? Or yeah. Just... Yeah. I was always working on my cars. I had, I was into Monte Carlos at that time. I had a few of them. I had a, I had a, uh, 76 Monte Carlo, I put a 454 in. and Oh, all right. Yeah, so I, I was learning as, you know, and there I was moving up to scale as I learned more. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, that was a good thing about being an actual mechanic for a while. I learned how to actually do things. Right, how the, the basics of how engines work yeah. and vehicles should yep. work. Mm -hmm. 
you're like, okay, some of the stuff I was doing wasn't that safe. Right, right exactly, yeah. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I had a lot of those moments. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, we all do that. Uh-huh. Now, were you, was there any, I mean, were you doing, because that, I should step back. During that era, I feel like was, in a, especially in, where, now you were in, were you, I shouldn't have asked, I should have asked this. Jersey was where you grew, I knew this. Yeah, I grew up in New Jersey. So the, during that time, was still in New Jersey. I was still in New Jersey, yeah. Um were you like i feel like in this area especially like drag strips were like maple grove for us was booming at that point i remember yeah. as a kid going to maple grove and it was like so for you it was english town english town yeah. but like same thing was it just like that was the place to go oh yeah it, that was like you know you, you could hear angels sing as you drove through the gates that was always it for me i, I always loved that and the oldsmobile dealership i worked at was you know 20 minutes from there oh no kidding yeah so it was, frequented you frequented yeah i could go to the friday the wednesday night shows after work you know they had oh. wednesday night racing oh, okay. racing then and stuff so uh yeah i mean it was it was and was cool. the, was that um jesus moon you're drawing all <laughs> over me go give mike some drool he's got a drool rainbow right now Dude, I don't, it's, connected. It's, connected. it's a drool oh, rainbow no. that's, oh, a, moon. that's a drool rainbow lay down come on come on buddy Come on, you're interrupting the interview. Lay down. <laughs> Lay down. Thank you. He's looking at those treats on I know, desk. I appreciate mm-hmm. it. Um, so was that, when did the racing kind of thing get, you know, did you start getting interested in that kind of stuff? I think I was interested in drag racing right from the very beginning. Oh, okay. That that was always my thing. I mean, I mean, you know, uh, circle track racing, I could take it or leave it, but. Drag racing has always been my thing. That was the that was it for you. Yeah. Now, did you were you doing some of those Wednesday night or Friday night grudge night type no, things? No, no, I I I was more of a spectator. Yeah, I, I never, I was always too nervous right. to do things like yeah. And I get that because I've always said that I, I I enjoy drag racing. It's never made me excited to do it. Um, right. Some of it for me was always cost and my friends always being upset when their cars broke every week. But. Exactly, yeah, because I was driving my junk. I couldn't break it every weekend. <laughs> Had to get to work on Monday. Exactly. But you were enjoying just going and watching. And oh, yeah. Kind of stuff. Yeah, I could do it all, all day long. I could sit and watch cars go down a racetrack. Do you remember any cars from like that era growing up that were like, like was there the badass car in your, in your area or neighborhood a friend had? Um, there was a couple. There was, there was a guy... Jeez, when I was young, probably in the early 80s, mm-hmm. he had a, like a Toyota pickup that he put a small block Chevy in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, he uh, modified the uh, firewall with an axe. You know, it was, <laughs> okay. just, it was strictly to go fast. Yeah. I mean, there was a couple cars like that, but there wasn't really anybody in my neighbor. There was guys who had nice cars. Okay. But not really anything really. No real, No real hitters. Right. Oh, okay. But um, so at that point you were doing, you switched from the dealership thing. What what kind of route did you take from there? Uh, huge step sideways. I became a truck driver. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have. It has an engine. <laughs> it does. Yeah. It does. And I, I, I was happier driving them than I was fixing them. That makes sense. I was. Yeah. I just. I. I didn't. I didn't like being a mechanic. I didn't want to work on everybody else's junk. I wanted to work on my junk. Right. Right. And uh, when did your wife and, and yourself meet? Like what? How? We met uh, shortly after high school. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, it was it was right right after high school, right around that time. We were probably twenty years old. Okay. Yeah. So she was through these changes of career path. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. She yeah she we, she was there when I was I was still a mechanic when I met her, and then I, I changed over to truck driving. And her father was a truck driver, and he said, "Are you sure you want to do that?" <laughs> I got to do something. <laughs> right. And now some some of her family side was into cars. I know. Oh, yeah. Again, I, I'm foreshadowing. I know right. some of this. But so that was probably a big influence. It was a big influence on me. Yeah. Her father was a was an old drag racer, you know, built, had a, when he was a teenager, he had a 54 that he customized and he had a 56 Chevy wagon that he drag raced. Nice. In in uh, junior stock, 
and uh, yeah, he was a he was a big influence on me. I learned I learned a lot a lot more about the hot rodding stuff from him. Oh, cool. like that was, you know, that was a lot. Of, he was a lot of my education on that. He was good with that stuff, and he, he just didn't care. He just he he'd get in anything and go. He just like he didn't have any. If it broke, he didn't care. It, right? Yeah. If it broke, he fixed it. He didn't care. Right. I, 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 I learned that from him too. It's gonna break. Just go. Just drive it. Just go. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's uh, definitely that's respectful. That's uh, respectable. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, now, when did you did you do some drag racing pitting as well? Was that how young were you? When that you was did that? that was with my father in law. Yeah, he raced with a guy who ran a um, a top alcohol dragster from New Jersey. Oh, okay. And uh, he was good friends with him. He, the guy ran a speed shop and uh, a couple of times, I, 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 at this point, I don't know, maybe half a dozen, between a half a dozen and a dozen times I went along and got to go in the pits with them and stand at the starting line when the cars ran and it was, oh. So cool, right? Oh my yeah. God, it was awesome. That's amazing. Yep. Yeah, like here, hold this wrench or, you know, yeah, go yeah. fetch the fuel can. Or I something. didn't care what I did. I was happy to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> Wipe the car down. Yep. No problem. No problem. I'll do it. Do you remember the speed shop name? It was uh, uh, Heads Up Performance in uh, in uh, Edison, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. He uh, was uh, the he was Wayne Selko. He, okay. he ran he ran the car. He was he was a division one champ once. I think he won one national event and uh, yeah, he was a. Uh, just a division a division one racer for the most part right but still equally as exciting for a young guy oh my god yeah it was like watching a car run a quarter mile in five seconds it was at 220 miles an hour that's nuts yeah oh yeah (laughs) still nuts yep and to be that close to it 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 was it was mind-blowing that's now did he drive his own car did he have a driver he built his own car he drove his own car he tuned his own car he did everything oh that's yeah he was he was the man like he was like my hero that's awesome. Yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, but it sounds like both your family and and your your uh, wife's family all f- Chevy, GM. Yeah, yeah. Larry was always a Chevy guy, and my father was always a Chevy guy too. So, kind yeah. of just runs. Yeah, it's in the blood mm-hmm. kind of thing. So when um, both your wife and yourself had. You'd always had kind of like a fun car or did you, when were you able to actually have like a fun car and a driver? I had, uh, geez, right after we got married, we got a, uh, an 86 Monte Carlo Supersport. It was nothing special, but it was a nice car. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I had that for, I had that for a long time, probably close to 20 years, you know, wow. went through a couple of engine changes, a couple of transmission changes. I got it. The bodywork done on it and had it you know, just painted dead black. And yeah. I, I thought it was a cool car. I really liked that car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And But that was still a day, daily driver. Daily driver, yep. Okay. Now, did your wife have anything cool as you guys were going up, or did you share a car? We we shared a car. She, right. she still will never let me forget it. Her father was building her a 68 Camaro when he passed away, and... Oh no! Oh no! No, it actually was before that. But yeah, it's every, it kind of stalled out, and the project got passed along. Oh no! So and yeah, she's she, like, yeah, we she's, never should have sold it. Yeah, she's she's still she still brings it up from time to time. <laughs> she could have had a '68 Camaro. Yeah, well, they they, they that tends to happen. Yeah, you know, that's that's funny. Now you're um, you obviously you guys were you know you were still truck driving through all this and just. Just an enthusiast going to shows and stuff, is that... Always going to shows. I went to the drag races as much as I could. Um, And being at a... My father-in-law, Larry, Mm -hmm. he he was a wheeler dealer. And he, like, got all... He got, like, comp passes to all the... You know, all the national event drag races that I wanted to go to. He'd get me, you know, hospitality, tent, starting line passes, like... Back in them days, all you needed was a pass to go on the starting line. They they since cracked down yeah, on that a yeah. lot. But back then, it was like, here's my pass. I'm going to walk over there. Yeah, like, <laughs> okay, let me stand right next to this top fuel. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. When did you guys move to the Lehigh Valley area? It was 1991, 92. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's been a long time already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, were, did you, were either of your kids born yet or no? Uh, my older daughter was born in New Jersey. My younger daughter was born in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So it was in between the two kids. 
my family was from up here, and I, I always wanted to live up here. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, and Jersey's smelly, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of super fun sites real close to my house. Oh, that explains that a, explains a lot. A lot. The a oil lot. refineries, the super fun sites. Yeah, I grew up in a nice part of Jersey. Yeah, it is a nice. No wonder he twitches so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. We thought we we thought the memory loss was from hitting his head. It's actually from all the chemicals, and <laughs> it could be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's entirely possible. Oh my god! So, as you know, your kids are grown. You know, kids are kind of grown up and all that. And how did you? Well, fast forward a little bit. How did you find? I don't know if I ever asked you this. How did you find Iron Trap? Um, my the first Iron Trap. It was on a uh, YouTube when you went to that factory in Philadelphia and got that Packard. Okay, yep. That was the first time I found you. And I, I said, this is pretty cool. It's like, there's no BS. Like, it wasn't like, because at that time it was still like, uh, you know, I had the... <laughs> <laughs> That's Moon drinking out of a hubcap, just so you guys know. Yeah. yeah. We had, Moon decided he wanted to be up here and so he needs his hubcap, his treats. It's like a small child. <laughs> Small child. That's a, that's a large. He's child. a large child. He's yeah. mo he's huffing and puffing in the background. If you hear any moaning, oh god! Oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, so you found the Packard video? And yeah, you were like, it was. It was. I enjoyed it a lot more because at that time it was still like the reality TV car shows were on. Yeah. I don't know if they still are or not. And it was just like I wanted to see the cars. I didn't care about the other stuff and that's right. what i always liked about iron trap mm -hmm. you know you had the personalities but you it was the personalities working on cars not yelling at each other yes so yeah. i was i i really liked that and i just became a fan then and and then one day i i was like i was watching one of your lives yeah so i um for people always ask us how did you find steve whatever so when things started getting kind of like getting big for us and it might have been 2020 even. it was was it during 2020? it was yeah it was it was just before covid or during covid it was it was, it was uh, right when covid hit it was actually i think it was the summer of 2020 after covid hit and oh yeah kind of relaxed a little bit yeah so i stuff was really blowing up for us and um we were we pushed to do the three video a week thing and it was totally out of control i had my job with eastwood mike was working a full-time job I was wheeling and dealing parts and cars and everything else, and it was insanity. I mean, completely. Yeah. be completely honest, my Eastwood job was getting pushed to the side, and this stuff was taking priority. And uh, I, kinda, I had a million people asking to help, and that, that was after Andrew left, I think. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah so yeah. Andrew had left during 2020, and we were kind of left a hole of just people to help. So I finally was like, all right, I'm going to accept some volunteers and i guess i made a, a plead in the, in the thing if anybody's interested send an email and we had three or four guys i think in the beginning that yeah. emailed and called like guys that had emailed and i did phone calls with each of them and just on the phone kind of got a feel for i might have had more than that but i narrowed it down to like three guys yeah i think three of us like came around at the same yeah, time yeah so and i think all three of you guys might have showed up the first day yeah on a sunday and snowing like hell yeah of course <laughs> middle of the winter shop was packed to the brim because i had too much stuff and oh that's right yeah well, that's right it was the winter because it was snowing yep yeah and that was i think when i had the shoal car the skelly car um yeah those all that all stuff, stuff had already. just come in come in from the shoal estate so yep. it was like super packed those yeah. were the days of pushing things outside to work on things mm -hmm. yeah yep so i mean you i called you i don't even remember the conversation but like obviously you, you i could tell you new cars so i was like right okay, and I, at that time I, I was working second shift oh that's so right. i was free during the day so i mean it kind of okay. like kind of fell into place it was nice yeah and I, and I remember we had the three guys start and then um all three guys stuck around for a while um Jack, Jeff, and, yeah, and yourself. That's right, Jack and Jeff. Yep. And uh, those guys, and I kind of worked out a schedule where they were coming different times. And like you, Steve was great because he was he was working. So like during the week he could come. Where yeah. the other guys were maybe like one day a week. They were both kind of retired, so it was like one day a week, whatever. Where Steve kind of had a schedule going for me, where it was you know a little more repetition, and yeah. he just never stopped showing up. Nope. For, you were coming what two to three days a week? Two days a week, That's I was right. coming in. Yeah, yeah, he was coming in, and he was, um, and the other guys were doing great, but Steve definitely had the most um, 
um, skill, I would say. You, Ooh. you were, I'll yeah, well, that. yeah. I mean, you, it would, to be completely honest, you were the one that had the most experience. Those guys told me that up front, like, hey, right. you know, like Jeff that worked for us that, that helped us was just like, I don't know anything. I just want to hang around. Just make me do stuff. I can't hurt anything. So like, he was, a, <laughs> he was our, he was our paint guy and our, right. Oh yeah, he loved the uh, um, SCT. The SCT. Yeah. 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 So he did great with that stuff. <laughs> And then Jack just liked hanging out. He was a little more sporadic with when he would come, but he was kind of the same thing, like just had me tinker on whatever. And um, yeah, it was like a year. He just showed up and, it was... and he kept working and working and really showed up every time. And mm-hmm. and then it was like everything blew up. And right, everything I'm, started going crazy. With the channel. Yeah, and, had so a how... lot of cars that really needed to be pushed to the finish line at that point yeah we we did a lot of work uh, doing yeah. stuff like that at that time what was your i mean after the first handful of times of coming here what was your impression or like say after the first day or two you helped like when you came home to your wife she's like so what, what the hell did you do what, i i i found my happy place like i walked into the garage here i'm like I, I look at all these cars look at the walls look at the signs i'm like i'm in my happy place like <laughs> I, I just want to stay here that's awesome yeah so yeah you weren't you didn't go home like this guy's a dick no 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 you could have been i mean you could have <laughs> said that and it still said the place was cool <laughs> right no no it's good we, we i we get along well here we, we we have we always have fun working yeah so um and then it was like i guess it was a year it basically. was close to it i think about a year um you coming and helping and whatever i mean you work through like what was your favorite I'm sure people ask this, like, what, what were your fa- some of your favorite, before you started full-time, what were some of your favorite moments or cars or things that you worked on or um, stuff we did that really was like, you got... The uh, the Schroll Coop. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, I guess it wasn't too long after I started here. You, you, had, you started did the on. frame, yep. and we pulled the body in, and it was like, that was li- the first time I had ever participated in a build that was that far involved involved uh, yes. right yeah, yeah. Like, no floor sketchy nothing yes. right there was nothing yep yeah and that's that's like life changer for most people like oh it was Whoa, yeah. we're gonna like we're gonna fix this right like, i'm like the- i've done all i've done a lot of this stuff before but never all at the same time <laughs> on the same car you know and there's no manual there's no, no. there's just no yeah, directions <laughs> get it done just figure it out <laughs> here's a picture i want it to look like this yeah <laughs> <laughs> Not, go, not a good picture either. Yeah. We want to go 75 miles an hour down the highway, and we want it to look cool and be old. Yeah, and, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, that was yeah, that was a big one. I mean, that was and that was one of our t- t- turning points in the channel for sure. But mm-hmm. I mean, I remember you coming, not wanting like you're like, I don't, I ah, back to reality. That's it. Know? I got to go back to the real world. That was because oh. Steve works second shift, so you would come here in the morning, work you know, half or three quarters of a normal work day and then he'd leave at two o'clock or whatever yep, it was. Go to work. And he would go to his truck driving job for second shift and it was just like, you know, and then the next time he'd come, I'd be like, oh, so how's things going? Oh, f- freaking work and uh, just just whatever, you know, like just normal work stuff. Yeah, and, you right. Know. I had a good job that I liked, but it was a job, you know. It, Guys calling off and you having to pick yeah, up slack. And, exactly, yeah. You know, so normal, normal work, you know, normal job stuff, but, mm-hmm. you know, and then finally, it was like things started blowing out of con- blowing up, and I guess Mike went full time. I went full time. I quit my Eastwood job kind of abruptly. It was like I had threatened to f- quit a few times, <laughs> and then finally, I just had enough. And I uh, not necessarily because of them. I just was like, all right, what we're doing, let's do it. And I quit. And then it was like a month or two months later. There were three months apart. You quit your job. Three months later, I quit my job. Oh, okay. Then three months later, we hired Steve. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So Mike jumped on, and as soon as Mike started helping, stuff got way easier. It was like, okay. Oh yeah. Mike could give more give more focus to the video stuff. We can help with the parts stuff, and we instantly started seeing the parts business grow because Mike could give a focus to it. I didn't have to like be asking my dad to box and ship stuff in my yard in my basement because, <laughs> you know, uh, or yeah. run. I had stuff at the warehouse. That we have currently i just had a smaller space i had stuff here at my house and the trailer and the backyard and it was it was just all over the place so we kind of like made the shift and then it was like well crap i still need help with i'm still trying to build cars 
three videos a week by myself because Mike's doing all the other stuff. So and then one day it's kind of like, well, you don't have to go back to your real job. Right. And I saw Steve's like ears. Like, what? I, I wasn't sure what I heard at first. I wanted to, I, like I, I, I made him say it like twice just so I didn't. <laughs> You know, read something into it that wasn't there. It's like you're talking to your wife. Yeah. yeah. Say that again? Wait, exactly, wait, 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 yeah. Wait. Yeah, and I'm, yeah. Like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, just, uh, so then it, you just started. I, I mean, said, okay. Your first, and, and we have a little bit of a ritual we had with, I guess we'll say full-time employees, because we haven't done it with the part-time helpers we've had over the years, but we usually try and go on an adventure first day of work. <laughs> That's kind of like my thing, uh, and it. Kind of by accident, but we took you to like a, I think an auction. We went to yeah. like a local auction, and yep. we did a bunch of like, I mean, it's not. Oh, that's right. It's, yeah, the one with the cannons. Yeah, it was the oh, cannon the auction. Cannons. <laughs> so like, and like Mike's first day, we did. The Merc. Oh, we went and got the the thirty nine Merc for Mike's first day. So it was like, it was like a kind of like, it's I guess a little bit of a tease, but like. It's pretty cool every day here, but it was like trying to do it above and beyond. So it's right, like your yeah, first it, day. It could be uh, even cooler. Yeah, <laughs> see how cool this is. So we got to get Steve hooked right from the, you know, even more. He's like, yeah. oh man, this is great. Yep. Wait, I get paid this week. This is great. We so did, yeah, we did tease him a couple times when he was just part time, taking him to like Ted's auto picnic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. You know, with us when we did the thirty nine, all the filming at the junkyard. Oh yeah, yeah that's we right. Wrap it up. He's like, I gotta go to work. Fast. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, we're gonna go get some pizza or or, or Mexican food <laughs> after this, and you know, yeah, oh, that's right. The day at the junkyard, we're gonna go for pizza. I'm going to work. Yeah, I'm going to. <laughs> you want to come with Steve? It'll be super fun. You yeah. Know? We're to keep this party going. You're like, I gotta go to work. <laughs> Stupid work. Yeah. Uh, so, um, oh, everybody keeps asking. What do you have? What's your your hot rod? I, my God, we gotta we gotta answer we gotta answer these like questions we get every time. So what's yeah, your right. what's your you have more than one? But what's your like cool cars you have? I have a '69 Nova Super Sport. Uh, it's, I bought it as a I bought it at Carlisle actually as a just a roller. It had no engine, no trans. Most of the rear end was blown out of it, and there was no interior. It was it, it was a nice looking car. But it was it was a former race car. It had a roll cage, and the interior was just was completely gutted. But I saw this car, and I just fell in love. I called my wife on the phone. I said, um, "Can you go to the bank and get me a whole bunch of money?" <laughs> it was funny. She worked night shift the night before, so she had been sleeping for like two hours. And uh, she calls me back like five minutes later. She goes. I'm halfway to the bank. Did you really ask me to go to the bank to take money on? I'm like, yes, I did. <laughs> she was so tired. She didn't realize it. She so was that just sure. a dream? <laughs> yep. That's funny. Yeah, it was. So you got that thing. And How many years ago was that? I got that in 2012, oh, okay. I believe it was. 2012, yeah. So you've had it a while. Yeah, yeah I've, had it for, I've had it for a while. And... Uh, and then you put what's that for an engine? A uh, four fifty four. Okay. Yeah. So you did all that stuff. You... I did all that. I put put a manual transmission in it. I put a five speed transmission in it. I rebuilt the rear end. I touched basically every nut and bolt on the car. And did you have that on the? Uh, was that the car you had on the power tour? Or what? I did not take that on the power tour. I finished it like the year after. Okay. I we my uncle and I st- stopped going on the power tour. We did road trips. My uncle drives his cars everywhere like arizona he don't care another one he just don't care he gets in and goes yeah yeah so that car's been down it's the first the first year we finished it uh we went out to indianapolis to a car show to the road rocket rumble Mm -hmm. and then from there down to winston salem north carolina to heavy rebel so that was how I broke my car in. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And after a trip like that, you're like, all right. Right, yeah, yeah, I can trust this thing. Yeah, nothing fell off. I was pretty lucky. I only had one minor brake uh, leak. Oh, that's and I fixed that, and luckily it happened right next to a parts store. So <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So that one, you have that one, and then you have, what's the other car you have? Uh, an 84 Monte Carlo Super Sport. It was my, uh, my wife's father's car before he passed away. Oh, cool. Yeah, he... Did the same, you know, he was a lifelong hot rider, put a 350 in it, put a four-speed in it, and he passed away, and his brother, 
I call him my uncle. It's my wife's uncle. Okay. But uh, he took the car and redid the whole car and just, I mean, just did a beautiful job. But it's a beautiful car to look at. Yeah, I know you've driven it here yeah. a bunch of times. It's a nice car. Yeah. And that car, that's the one that's been on power tour? Because isn't there that a sticker? Car, yeah. That okay. car has been on power tour. I, yeah, uh, I think my wife's father and his brother uh, went on, like, the first power tour. The oh. first one they did not in California. Yep, yep. I guess they had done a couple of things yeah. like that before that. But it was, I think, the first one that they did that. And Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then when Gary had it and was redoing it, we, we took it on the power tour a few times. That's cool. Yeah. That's got to be a neat, that was a neat experience, I'm sure. Yeah. The one year we took my father-in-law along, mm -hmm. I flew down to Florida to meet Gary and my father-in-law had been cremated and I took along into my backpack and he made the trip with us. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. That's really, really neat. <laughs> yeah. We, and that was the year it, it finished at English Town, so we got to take him back to English Town again and... That's super neat. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So everybody now knows your your cars. Yeah. And everybody's always asking, when's Steve going to build a hot rod? What's, what's his... We need to get buy Steve a car and build him a hot rod. And all these right. wild statements that we get. So, I, I mean, see that a lot. My favorite's give Steve a car. Give Steve oh, a hot right. rod. Oh, right. Yeah, no. No, no giving. I like Steve, but... <laughs> right, I like no Mike, giving. but... These cars are worth a little bit of money, and yeah. I mean that's a pretty good bonus. Like, yeah, how about it? Yeah, that's that'd like be a, a heck rich, of a. That's a rich person's YouTube channel. This, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't make millions of dollars. This isn't Mr. Beast. I'm not gonna like give all my fucking friends a twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, here. you get a car. You get a car. Right. My ass is poor. Mm -hmm. Um. So, do you have any interest? If you could, let's say this. Do you, well, number one, do you have any interest in building a? Let's call it nostalgic car. I do. Um, I would love to, but I've always tried to be really pragmatic about my cars. I have a two-car garage, and I have two cars. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I, I just... You're not insane. No, uh, I, I, tr I try not to be. I try really hard not to be. And I, I would love to, but I, I would have to get rid of one of my other cars first, and doing that is... Like not in the cards right at the moment. Yeah, it makes sense. It's like working at the loony bin. You're not going to shit yourself because you watch people shit themselves all day. So right. Steve, <laughs> you like that? That is the best, the best <laughs> analogy <laughs> ever. <laughs> so Steve watches me, a crazy person, every day of the week, and he's like, I don't want to be like that. That's fucking insane. Plus, so, I completely get my fix here. Yes. Like, I would love to build another car, but I completely get my fix here. Like I do it every day and I, I love every minute of it. Yeah. And so people are always asking about that. And that's kind of, I've tried to answer that a bunch in the yeah. comments, but it's like in the same breath, if Steve wants to drive a car, I've told him a bunch of times, like, you know, want to test and Mike, it's like, you guys want to test drive a car? Like just like my dad's car. It's like, just take it home, yeah. drive it to work for a week. Cause that's how we're going to find out if the car's doing well. Like, You're right. And Steve's uh, driven a bunch. Of, like, yes. Yeah, St Steve's driven most, the, pretty much all the cars and, we're always like, and we always get, well, why don't you let Steve have the first test driver? Why don't you, it's kind of like if something breaks, right? It, it's me. It's not like, it's not that I'm like not offering, like Steve can drive the cars. It's just yeah. usually the first test drive. Like I want to be the one that if something falls off or a wheel fall, <laughs> something happens, <laughs> right. I'm driving. I can't be like mad at something Steve did just exactly. in the moment. Yeah. So like, that's why I usually take the first drive because it's also the like, and you know, they are my cars in the end. Exactly. Of the day. So it's uh, like, your name is on the title. That's, yeah. that's, that's your, your right. That's like the one, my one joy in life is the uh, first, first test drive. The first but, ride, yep. But yeah, so I mean, Steve's driven a lot of them. We, but yeah, people are always asking like mm -hmm. about that. What If you could build uh, a car, uh, a, what would be your one if you could? We, there's a lot of them that you've talked about. I have, you? yeah. Um. I've, I've become very fond of flatheads. Good figure. By force. By force. <laughs> yeah, it's like when in, in like a torture movie where they hold your eyelids open and just play and play like a movie, oh, like right. propaganda. Yeah. That's, that's Steve with flatheads. You're like, you're going to like them. Right. Flatheads are the greatest engine ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I like like 4950 Fords, I think, doing a mild custom like oh, that. Yeah. Just a driver. Yeah. Just yeah. nothing crazy with a flathead and a three speed just yeah just yeah. something nice and basic and that's a very obtainable right car yeah 
but the, the cost I could see that for you a custom or yeah. a, a bigger not a big car but a bigger car mm -hmm. would be definitely yeah I'm getting old it's hard to get in and out of some of these cars yeah the I love that troll car but I couldn't imagine crawling in and out of, that, <laughs> out of that too often it is a little difficult to get in and out of Steve's, but Steve's a perfect employee too you guys are like the same size yeah so test driving cars it's like yeah identical yeah, and like when we're setting up the like, the seat or the windshield height or any of that stuff, like Steve could get in, and I'm like, yeah, it looks pretty cool. It looks like your head's right. He's like, yeah, it feels yeah. comfortable, and it's going to be fairly similar for us when we, you know, mm -hmm. when we swap. But, um, so yeah, th do you have? I mean, you you have a thing for Cadillacs. I love the, Cadillacs. You used to daily drive a Cadillac, right? Yeah, like, it, you know. yeah, just a you know a two thousands Cadillac. But you would, that's another one I've heard you mention is having some sort of cat, oh, yeah. vintage cat. If money were no object, it would be, I would have a Cadillac. Yeah. yeah. We, we've tried a few, there's been a few times where we've had some leads on estates that had like 50s caddies that were like decent that seemed like you could probably do a mechanical restoration on yeah. them and drive them. And yep. Steve's all, same thing. Uh, hey, honey, um, you think maybe we could uh, make room for a daily driver caddy right. if 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 a deal came up on a cadillac i wouldn't be able to say no to that yeah that would be coming home with me so we've been we, we're always keeping our eyes open for that kind of stuff which is you know not in a rush but if we came across mm -hmm. the if i think it, the key is something that you much like mike's kind of had his eyes out for a 50s car like something that doesn't need what we do like, no right yeah could, it would have to be the right car yeah you could like you could just do brakes and mm -hmm. you know brake lines fuel lines normal yep. stuff and yep do the a mechanical restoration not a whole floor and sub rail right and... yeah not missing every piece of chrome on the car it's <laughs> worth twenty five thousand dollars to yeah, do the chrome exactly so yeah that's uh definitely i'm trying to think if there's any other questions we get all the time what's oh i know we'll ask the the basic stuff what's your uh what would be your your dream car in general like if there was a you know it doesn't have to be could be a muscle car it could be anything like is there the the car if you could find the, the your it's going to sound weird i don't know, weird saying this but i've always wanted a nova like a 69 nova was always the car i wanted okay when i was in high school i would write nova on my no on my books you know like <laughs> cool. I, I was at, i was at dweeb to car dweeb you know i was yeah. writing nova and chevelle and nova uh, you know camaro <laughs> on my books and right. stuff i i was that dweeb but a nova would be the i always wanted a big block nova oh all right <laughs> i mean there's it's a cool car it's yeah. not nothing to be weird about i mean that's just yeah it's just it's, it's just odd that it it it, it, it present it presented itself the way it did yeah yeah and um do you have a like a favorite I guess since you've been exposed to this stuff and you've been to some collections and some of the running around we do, is there a favorite like hot rod or custom for you that you've whether you've seen it or you've been exposed to it or whatever, like um I got it like a thirty three, thirty four three window. I mean I just think those are the coolest looking cars. Right. I so. just they stock they look good, but like the the Arden car downstairs with that thing set down and that grill on it it it, it gives me goosebumps it's yeah. just too cool looking and that's that that drag racing side of you I mean yeah. cause you saw those cars in the 70s and 80s those yep. things were still running mm -hmm. you know with tracks yep. with just shells of what they were right but, you yeah know. yeah that's I mean that's a good pick I like that yeah it's, <laughs> I mean that car is just pure badass it just is that's awesome. Now you've been on a. This is a f kind of probably a fun, kind of a fun question for me um, to ask you. You've been on some picks with us. Now you don't go on every pick. People ask. I guess people ask that too. Like, why isn't Steve with or whatever? Okay, yeah. Um, the whole idea with you like, is to keep things running at the shop while right. while, while I'm r running around doing the madness we do. Yep, so got to keep things moving along. Right. So a lot of times Steve doesn't go with, but you've been on a handful. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any? like favorite memory or trip that you did do with us adventure let's say i have to say the uh the west virginia the with the nos uh sheet metal in the <laughs> in the pole in the pole building you went with on both trips right i did yeah the first one when we got there and like the the driveway was kind of cut out but not quite and mm. there's like a big rock ledge over here and bamboo grown over and I kind of stood back and watched like four or five of you walk up the driveway and I took a picture. I'm like, I, I don't think we're ever coming out of here. 
<laughs> he was like, I'll stay out here. You guys call Right. Me he tried to send a text to his wife with his location, but there was no service. Yeah. We were oh, yeah, yeah. In the middle of nowhere, West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one was pretty wild. And I, I remember when we first, that first time we got there and you got in the building, I had to kind of reel you in because, and this is, this happens with everyone. Oh, it was, yeah. Everyone I've ever taken, like all my friends that I've taken on their first time doing a crazy digging adventure, you get like in a corner and you're just like picking up look at this look at this oh look yeah at, oh it was, look, yeah and he was over in a corner just like he only made it three feet in the door yeah and he's like check out this check out this i'm like steve we got to empty this building let's go to the back and start and he's just like oh oh yeah okay yeah <laughs> yeah it was the same thing at uh the auburn estate down by down uh, in by jersey. philly yeah yeah, yeah. In jersey and I, I we walked up in that attic and it was just full of parts and i'm like <gasps> I think actually that was the first trip you ever. Like, I think I think that was the first like picking adventure. Yeah, that was that was that not was, too long after I started. Yeah, I was gonna say, and that was that was a. I mean, you you probably remember this, but it was like that was a true like people think happens in our channel. How, literally, I got a phone call. We were just working on whatever normal day. Yep. Everything's normal. Music playing. And a buddy texts me and calls me, and I start talking. I'm like, you mean tomorrow? Like we need to go now? <laughs> and he's standing like what? And I get off the phone. I'm like, Steve, we have to go to Jersey tomorrow. We All should... hands on deck. Here yes. we go. We got to go clean the trail out. Let's get going. He's like, what are you talking about? Like, there's Auburn and Duesenberg and Caddy, yeah. big Caddy stuff. Uh, okay. And yep. load it up. And Pete. Yeah, Pete oh, was along. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, Pete. Four of us yeah, we just got whoever was available with like no notice. And off we went. And... That was that was crazy. And that was another one where there's just shells of stuff. And like I wanted to save every last piece because every last piece was good. Would 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 have sure. been usable to somebody. Yeah. But it was like that yeah. was one where we didn't have the manpower, so we just no, ran out it, of. It would have been impossible to empty the place. Yeah, know? we ran out of energy and time, and mm -hmm. mainly energy. I mean, we were all like just right. totally whooped at. The yeah, end. they were doing the roof on the places we were trying to empty it out. <laughs> yeah, that had to be a crazy first experience of like what you saw in the videos and then being there and yeah. like the roofs like. Getting knocked in as you're... There's a guy up. running around with a skid steer, smashing shit and dumping it in a dumpster. <laughs> and I'm running around, don't, no! Right, not that, not that, no, not no. that! <laughs> Pulling it off the... the front. Yeah, that, that was, was crazy. That was a pretty good one. Steve did join us during, like, that That year was absolute chaos. Yeah. We did a lot of stuff in that year. Yeah, and I was kind of... And that was when I've gotten better now. I was saying yes to almost any phone call we got right. or email, even if some of them weren't necessarily, that one was worth our time. But yeah. like, there was a lot of ones that Mike and I were running on where it was like, probably could have done without the random pickup truckload of whatever. But you mm -hmm. did, well, no, his first one was, he was still working and you went to the 32 farm. I did. That's right. Oh. I wanted to go along because it was local. I said, you got to take me on that yeah. one. Yeah. So we, I was like, we're cutting up a bunch of 32s in a field and- uh, it's right down the road, so you can still make it to work. Yep. And he went with, and yeah, that was actually closer to your house. It well. was, yeah. That was that wasn't far from us. Yep. Yeah, and we um, took my dad with, and mm -hmm. that was just mayhem. It was well. mayhem. That was like two, three days of just cutting cars and junk <laughs> and, and tear and cuttings. Yeah. That one was pretty. That one was probably more hard work than it was fun. Yeah. But that that one that was a job. That one, yeah, yeah. definitely. But that, and then, I mean, now you've you've been on a lot of them. I mean, going to pick up cars and different mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah, I don't know if there's Michigan. has been the uh, where'd you fly to? When you guys drove back. Well, no, that was Michigan. That was Michigan when okay. we went up and got the Chevelle parts. Yeah, the I think it was. Oh yeah, yeah we yeah we we flew up for that and rented a truck. Yeah. What what was that like? Like you saw, you know, the thirty fours I got. Before you started, I think. Yeah, that was before I started also. So you yeah. got to go back to the scene of yeah. the video. And I'm like, they were in here? Wow. <laughs> yeah, hard to believe. Yeah, It was. Yeah, like, yeah, there was like five cars right in this building here. And yeah, there's the it was three just, window. A, just an old fallen down barn. You know, you never would have expected. Driving past it, you would never think there was anything in it. And we were in and out in like half a day of the sheet yeah. metal. I mean, it, was, yeah. it went quick. And I mean, for, for you... That was probably in, in what you're into. That was probably more up your alley with like, 
holy crap stuff like NOS 70 Chevelle sheet metal. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's like a, a holy grail object for someone who's in, into Sable, muscle West, cars. West Virginia, I mean, when's the last time you saw 800 NOS pieces of sheet metal? Yeah, that was, that was mind blowing. Yeah. That was just my, pictures did not do that justice. And those two picks were eight months apart, I think, or six months. They were like back to back. Yeah, we had an incredible amount. There for a minute, we were GM, NOS GM parts. <laughs> yes, we were guys yeah but we were using steve in west virginia as our he was like the only one that even knew like i have no freaking clue. half those body panels in west virginia i'm like i don't even know what these are like i have no idea what this he's like oh that looks like a, a 72 xyz and he's yeah like, a lot oh. of them were a lot of the sheet metal was from like the se- yeah. 70s where i could identify it yeah. a little bit yeah so that was like a kind of helpful because steve was at least on the first trip like oh this looks good this is this is whatever <laughs> And then we got home and we quickly realized we're like, we should grab everything because even the four door and the, the you know, stuff. the wagon stuff that you maybe just didn't, it's like me saying, a, I did, you know, four I didn't value it. I didn't realize there was a market for it, but yeah, yeah there ended up being, yeah. But it was like, oh crap, we got to go back for everything. Yep. So that was, that was insane. That was nuts. So, um, and then probably one of the other fun memories that I think I have with, with you is that we, um, when we did the relics riot that was a good time steve, steve's in a good that's the other thing about hiring steve steve was like in the perfect place in his life his, oh yeah oh definitely his daughters are 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 grown up they're on their own you know his wife has uh, you know has a job and works a little bit different of a schedule a lot of times yep. than, than you do and and your kids are kind of right gone. i so can, you, i can pick up and go it's like i'm you know 20 years old again i can yeah. just whoop, it's pretty going. sweet so like we were supposed to go to Relics Riot. I was supposed to fly out there on my own and and do a little demo in their their shop for a couple of days with like high school kids. And then Mike was going to drive the truck and trailer with the troll car yeah. out with some parts, and we were going to set up and vend and do all that. And then Mike, all my kids got sick. All Mike's kids got sick, and it was like, and his wife got sick, and he's like, dude, I can't go. Like, I got to take care of the family. Everybody's sick, which is you know was fine. It was just he was holding off to like the last minute to like maybe they'll get better and it was like the day before and you know the night before no, like, it was that day i came into work on a wednesday with my lunch box you said mike can't go i said all right well i'll go home and get my uh get my bag yeah Let's i was go. like yeah <laughs> you think you can maybe go well i think i was hemming and hawing. i'm like do i just drive the truck and trailer right. out on my own and i'll just handle it all myself i was supposed to leave on a flight i think that morning mm-hmm. or that afternoon or evening and i'm like trying to decide and i was like well I don't know. And then I was like, well, do you think you would want to go? You're like, yeah, I'll go. Why not? Yeah, I was like, I'll go pack my bag. Yeah, like, we'll be back like Saturday night. So Steve and I hopped in the truck trailer, drove it out to Michigan, you know, and I skipped my flight, got there, did the class. I mean, the Gilmore is like another one of those. You get there, you're like, holy crap. Yeah. That was, that was the first time you were there. That was the first time I was there. Yeah, that, that place is mind-blowing. Just the quality of cars in there is just Oh my God! And you were like, because uh, our friend Josh was uh, was kind of running the museum at the time, or one of the head people running the museum. He was kind of like, I went and did the class, and you were. He was just like, all right, Steve, go wander, yeah. do whatever you want for the whole day. And he's yeah, like, exactly. I got to wander around and all, you know, look at all the cars and stuff. It was that that place is mind blowing. That was probably a pretty cool. Like, wait, I'm getting paid. Yeah. This is my job. I'm exactly. Here. Yeah. I was like, I felt like I was on vacation, but <laughs> he's getting paid. Meanwhile, I was like hammering and dollying on a car and climbing in a trunk lid. I'm like, this sucks. Yeah. No, it was, it was fun, but <laughs> it was totally. Um, but then, I mean, my favorite memory of that trip was that was the first time the Schroll car was like done, so to speak. So yeah. we were like, you and I taking it from the hotel. It was like a 30 minute ride maybe yeah. to the, to the hotel and to the, sh- to the grounds at the Gilmore. So we were like driving that car early in the morning, just cruising. The roads to the Gilmore are like amazing. The beautiful like, old country roads. Yep. Yeah. So him and I were just, you know, grins th- through the ceiling because we pretty much, the, him and I together put that car together from nothing. Because um, like you met, you came in right when we were getting yeah. right into it. So yep. like, and then I remember we saw the, what was it the surf? surf? Surfer Jets. Yes, they played. Yeah, they played at, at the night show, yeah. Yeah, and they played pretty late, and we left, and it was like 10 or 11 o'clock at night, and we yep. were driving home, 
middle of the night, blasted through the roads with the with the stroll car. Yeah, thirty two Ford, and son was, of a gun. That was like a cool moment because we were so. It felt like we were so far from home in the pitch black, yep. ripping this car through back roads. It was just like a no real idea where we were, just yeah. on our way. You're like I think we got to go this way to town, but yep. I, I think that was that was a pretty cool uh, accidental. Oh yeah, and then we had problems on the way. Remember on the we left the show on my pickup truck. Uh, the starter we didn't know it, but the starter oh, was going right. That, oh, that was that time. Yeah, we we left, got to our first gas stop, and the truck. I, before we left, my truck was cranking hard, so I put a new battery in it because I thought the battery was on its way out. I hadn't replaced it in years. And then we drove all the way to the show, and it was no problem. And then we left the show, first fuel stop. Right. The thing was like, like wouldn't crank. So we went through this replacing the battery cable at the parts store. Yeah, in and, the parking lot, yep. And all this stuff, and then we... Drove through the night. Well, no, we got... Oh, yeah, we, we thought we fixed it because the battery cable we put on and it cranked up and started yeah. like, oh, hooray! And then we got... Like, we drove like hours to Ohio. And we were like, oh, let's get dinner. It was about to get dark. And we went out to get... After dinner, it was dark out. We went and got in the truck. And I started and it it barely started. It was like... Rrr, right. Rrr, 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 rrr. We were like, Steve, what do you think about not shutting the truck off? Right. And we were like... We were going to stop for the night. Yeah. Yeah. Then you're just like, I don't think we should turn. This I don't off. think we should shut this <laughs> off. So Steve and I took turns driving through the night. I ended up driving in a monsoon. In, I drove through a monsoon at like four. You know, from I drove the the terrible. Oh yeah, the, the sleepy time of night. Yeah, yeah, I drove like two a.m. to whenever we got home, like yeah. seven oh, yeah, or eight a.m. Yeah, you finished the trip. Yep. And it was like monsoon mm-hmm. craziness, and every every fuel stop, we were like, stop. Let the truck run, run in, grab some food, yeah, whatever, and just keep moving. And we got it home, and then we figured out that the starter was was going bad, and and that's what it was. But at the time, we were like, from the whole having to just pick up and go and everything, we were like, we just want to get home. Yep, exactly. No, nothing else. We just need to be home. But we did know at least that the stroll car ran good, so we were like, if the truck breaks, we can at least get Nat and drive it to right. Yeah, we can go to the parts store. Yeah, we can go to, go get something. So. Yeah. But so yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It has been. It's I'm the luckiest man alive. There's there's no two ways about that. There's no one on this planet who is luckier than me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not that good looking, so <laughs> maybe if you work but, you got, but they, you got good cars. That's true, that's true. <laughs> but if I was a hot chick with cool cars, then you would be Oh wait, you're no, you're yeah, married. I'm old and married. You're, you're married. That yeah, doesn't yeah. matter anymore. If that you, doesn't matter as much to me if anymore. If you were hot <laughs> and a, you would be the if you were a hot chick, I would be You would be the luckiest man alive. Yeah. 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 So we're looking for a hot female No. Steve's great. We love Steve and everybody else loves Steve. I think your laugh is probably the favorite thing of, of most people. We also get that. That's... I bray like a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help it. It just happens. Steve, Steve's got a habit of, uh, he laughs even, there's there's the funny laugh and there's the nervous laugh. So even when something's blowing up in your face. Oh, it's, yeah. It's about the same laugh. So sometimes I try not to get mad because he's just doing it out of habit. Yeah, yeah totally and Like my, my hand's on fire and he's like, ha, 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 ha. He's right. Before he goes, oh, shit, let me help you. And it's like, damn it, help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a thing. Yeah, that's yeah definitely it's, a thing. It's funny. But yeah, so, yeah, it's been cool. Thank it has Steve. been awesome. It, I, this is a ride I never thought I'd be on, and it, it's, it, it's amazing. We're, ar- we're already planning for Steve as, as he gets older. We're like already, we joke about like, all right, Steve, well, if we ever get another building, we're going to have a little corner, and you get older, and you can just sit in a chair and smoke cigars and work on a transmission or something. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, so I'll so we've already got a plan. We don't want to... He's passing Steve off on me when he gets older. Yeah, yeah he's going to put me out he's in mics. He's not your problem. <laughs> he's pretty... I mean, you just got to check to make sure he's not bleeding to death yeah, or something. Not, uh, or... I hurt myself a lot. There'll be lots of headroom above his head. So he doesn't, <laughs> I, doesn't I appreciate the, that. Don't put him near the lift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bubble wrap above where he works. <laughs> He will have to wear a hard hat. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No doubt. Oh, my God. So, well, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you guys for listening and watching. If you have any suggestions for anybody you'd like us to do or a topic, um, drop us a comment down below. And make sure if you're listening on any of the uh, podcast outlets, uh, hit the subscribe button so you can uh, keep up with what's going on. And, of course, we've been sending out a newsletter off from our website now where we've been putting new videos and stuff like that. So if you want to check in and you're not getting notifications, 
sign up for our email list and you can start getting those as well with what's going on each week. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.